A ring of fire setting up around the United States, bringing a train of storms from west to east, including strong wind, large hail, and the potential of some tornadoes. Welcome in, everybody, and welcome to the first full weekend of June. Hopefully, we're having an all right day out there. And uh, yeah, we've got a good bit to talk about. Really, the only thing, though, to talk about is that severe weather potential, but there's a lot of it to break down in today's video, and that's exactly what we're going to do. So we're going to start with uh, the satellite imagery that we're going to zoom into some other kind of forecasting models, take a look at some outlooks, break it down for you even more in depth. And I think by the time we get to the end of today, you're going to feel a lot more prepared for the rest of this pattern that we're dealing with. Now, if you haven't already, go ahead and like the video, subscribe and hit the bell for the latest notifications. Great way to stay up to date. And uh, again, we do have daily uploads on the channel, so you'll definitely want to stick around every day and come back for more. All right, let's dive on into things and start talking weather. Uh, starting with our infrared loop today, I've got this one pulled up because it shows that mess complex of storms that we've been talking about. I told you to be a wave of these things and yeah, guess where it is? Right over the heart of the country right now. Not hard to find those bright colors uh, indicating very tall clouds, indicating strong storms. Uh, currently over the Ozarks of Missouri, Arkansas, back into Oklahoma, Texas, and uh, now exiting Kansas, and eventually going to work into portions of the Ohio and Tennessee Valley today, where we do have an enhanced risk. That's a level three out of five chance for severe weather that we're going to talk about here in just a moment. But that's the real story maker. We do have some rain also up into the Northeast. It's another wave of storms that has worked on through, and uh, that's kind of the key example of a ring of fire pattern. Here is the ring of high pressure down to the south over the Gulf currently, and you can see the ring around it doing something like that. And that's kind of the train tracks for these storms as they continue crossing the country, again, bringing plenty of hazards with them. You can see it quite well on radar imagery as well. Yeah, check it out. We've got that line of storms, strong ones at that here, right over the heart of Arkansas currently. And uh, as we continue going through the day today, this will slowly but surely, uh, I say slowly, actually at a pretty good clip, I'd say work eastbound eventually through Mississippi, Tennessee, Alabama, and potentially by the evening hours, even into the Carolinas, where tomorrow could be another day of severe weather for the mid-Atlantic as all this energy gets pushed east. So again, it's kind of that same thing, starting in the west, moving east, bringing those hazards with them as they do. Uh, now let's go ahead and switch on over and take a look at some uh, upper level model data for today and tomorrow, give you an idea of why this is happening and how long it's going to last. And then we'll get into those SPC outlooks right after that. Let's start with that upper level map. And again, guess what it's going to show you? That ring of fire I just told you about. Now, this is a relatively subtle ring of fire pattern. By the time we get to July, you'll probably see it a little bit better. It's quite common this time of year uh, to get this sort of setup where we have a lot of warm air down south as summertime is pushing north. And it's that northward push of the summertime that tries to push this ridge upwards. And again, it's where we have that high pressure, that ridge, and that's leading to flow uh, kind of like this across the United States right now, again, around the ring of that high pressure, if you will. So kind of a one-two punch right now. We've got... Um a westerly flow here across the United States. And then we also have northwesterly flow uh, coming down. And eventually, I think what's going to happen is uh, this is going to lead to kind of two distinct areas of severe weather, especially by the time we get to tomorrow. Uh, so we're going to have one piece of energy that moves east into the Carolinas and Virginia for tomorrow. And then a new piece of energy is going to break down out of the northern stream and get down into Colorado, Kansas, New Mexico, western Oklahoma, and the panhandle of Texas, where we've already had plenty of severe storms in that area. Uh, over the past couple of days, tomorrow's going to get reignited, while today we're in a little bit of a lull. And you can see as we continue this ahead into time, uh, that's going to be the theme before eventually later this coming week, this is by Monday, uh, this big upper level trough or upper level low pressure kind of squishes that high down and that's going to move our train track of storms even further south down towards the Gulf and clear most of us out here through the Ohio Valley, the Midwest, and even into the Mid-Atlantic, I think. Uh, by the time we get to the early parts of this coming week, you can see it as well on our uh, excuse me on our vorticity map. I think doing a great job. This is a great tool to use for these sorts of patterns. This is this afternoon. Again, notice this kind of uh, little short wave trough with spin embedded with it. Uh, that's what's uh, leading to this piece of ener uh, energy. That's what's creating the Arkansas storms now. And again, by tomorrow, this is this afternoon. Watch what happens as I move the map ahead into our Sunday afternoon. Uh, that gets pushed eastbound. And uh, although a little weaker, we still have that short wave trough axis pushing east. And that's going to lead to an area of lift out in front of it over the mid-Atlantic that could produce strong to severe storms at the same time. 
Another little short wave trough uh, here over the west, that also leading to some spin and that potential for some storms to fire up. So uh, you can see the upper levels are oh so important this time of year when forecasting severe weather potential. Now let's swing on over, take a look at the SPC outlooks, and you'll start to realize, yeah, the math starts to add up quite well. All right, let's take a look at those Storm Prediction Center outlooks for today and tomorrow. Starting with today, uh, we've got a shark outlook. Uh, if you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, this is just kind of what it looks like. You've got uh, your fin at the top here, uh, your back two fins here this way, and then you kind of just got the bo uh, body of the shark and the, uh, I don't think they call it a beak, I guess a nose is what they call it on a shark, I don't know. Uh, but it looks like a shark, basically. Not that that really means anything for uh, the meteorology of it, just kind of a fun little tidbit there. It looks like a shark. So uh, now on a more serious note, though, we do have an enhanced risk of severe weather. That is a level three out of five today. Uh, that's everyone in the orange on this map. Huntsville, Atlanta, Gainesville, back towards Birmingham, Tuscaloosa, really just the northern half of Alabama and Mississippi in general. And the same story goes for Hot Springs, Pine Bluff, getting into Memphis and Jackson, Mississippi. Then everyone else kind of on the outer periphery of that in the yellow and the green, lower end chance of severe weather, but still a chance. Uh, now, what about the tornado threat today? Not very high. It's only a 2% chance. Uh, and again, we could get a quick spin up maybe back into the panhandle of Texas and then more of an embedded QLCS spin up tornado threat here from Arkansas over towards Georgia where we have that threat. Now, the hail threat today, uh, not off the charts. There could be some large hail with these storms. Or again, really anyone shaded in, but if you're in the yellow, you have the highest chance of seeing that hail today. The big threat today, though, uh, by far, is going to be strong straight line winds. Again, in the red, going to have the highest chance of those strong winds, but even into the yellow could see it and uh, even could see a couple places there in that brown shading, see some gusty winds up to severe criteria uh, past about 60 miles an hour. But the red, again, is the main threat area today for strong straight line winds. Let's get into tomorrow. Yeah, I told you we're going to switch to a bit of a bimodal setup. Two distinct areas we're watching for severe weather. Uh, let's start with the Carolinas because it's a little bit of a lower threat. The leftover piece of energy from today going to push east enough tomorrow that folks from uh, really the mid-Atlantic, Philly, Harrisburg, D.C., southbound, all the way to southern Georgia could see severe storms. Uh, and I'll tell you, I'm considering chasing tomorrow, so we'll see. But I do think there will be a bit of a boundary play up here in Virginia. We'll talk about this in a second. Uh, maybe a little bit of extra spin, but anywhere really, again, from wherever that boundary sets up southbound through eastern North Carolina, uh, eastern South Carolina, the Midlands, down through the low country, and then down into southern Georgia, could see strong storms, straight line winds, and hail, again, would be the main threat. Let's move it back out west, again, towards Texas, Oklahoma. We've got that enhanced risk. I think tomorrow, going to bump up the tornado threat a little bit out here into the Red River Valley and into the panhandle of Texas and Oklahoma. And you can see that here. If we take a look at the tornado threat, yeah, the SPC does have a 5% chance. Now, back east, again, I told you about that little boundary play. Uh, SPC sees it as well. They're watching DC, Richmond to Virginia Beach for maybe a quick spin of tornado. Higher chance of tornado though tomorrow would be again right into the Red River. This does include Oklahoma City, Wichita Falls. Oops, sorry, I'm uh, moving the map all around here. Oklahoma City, Wichita Falls, Amarillo, uh, back down towards Lubbock and Abilene could even see a tornado. Same for the DFW Metro. Uh, as for wind and hail tomorrow, the wind outlook could see significantly strong wind out here. Again, I really think the plains are the big story tomorrow. Don't sleep on the mid-Atlantic. Could see strong storms, but the plains are going to have a lot of ingredients for strong to severe storms, including wind. Again, here's your wind outlook and then your hail outlook as well. Highest chance of large hail back into uh, Oklahoma and Texas, right through the Red River Valley. All right, those are the SPC outlooks. Now let's switch on over and take a look at those uh, models and uh, break it down for you a little more in depth. All right, here's the latest run of the high resolution rapid refresh model. I think doing an all right job here at showing that severe weather potential this afternoon. Uh, and let's move it ahead into time just a little bit. Uh, we'll start this off basically right at the noon hour uh, on the East Coast. You can see what's kind of being set up here. Here's that big, strong complex of storms moving out of Arkansas right through where we have that enhanced risk. That's where we'll have the highest chance of strong straight line winds. Uh, let's move it ahead into time here, and you'll notice... Uh, again, kind of pushes east through northern Mississippi, northern Alabama, portions of Tennessee, uh, stays that strong bow echo, should maintain itself really throughout all the afternoon and even into the evening. By the time we get into this evening, even a couple pop-up storms in Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, out ahead of this thing could be possible. Not a ton of wind shear today with those storms, so tornado threat, again, very low, but some gusty winds, maybe some small hail 
uh, could definitely be something to watch. The biggest threat, though, again, this complex of storms. Uh, by the time we get to this evening, Huntsville, Birmingham, North Georgia, up towards Rome, Chattanooga, I'm going to start getting in on uh, the action here. And then through the overnight, likely to hit the Appalachia chain, lose some steam, lose some daylight, and should begin weakening as it moves into the Western Carolinas. And uh, it could just be some leftover rain by the time it gets to the Charlotte Metro uh, later this evening towards, you know, we'll say 9 p.m. to midnight, that general time frame. Uh, and then you can see on the back side, here's our piece of energy up towards uh, the north. Not so much of a, a severe weather threat up through the Ohio Valley, but again, maybe a couple storms try to become severe. It's that piece of energy, though, that's going to keep working east throughout the overnight tonight. And by the time we get into tomorrow morning on Sunday, uh, could potentially bring another complex of storms. Waking up Sunday morning, uh, check it out. The herd does show another big storm complex from Mississippi into uh, Alabama and Georgia. That could produce some severe storms. And then by the afternoon, pops up new storms up through the mid-Atlantic. We'll talk about that more in depth here on the next map. Uh, but uh, you could see some leftover storms could become severe into Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, uh, South Carolina, potentially the Florida Panhandle, even down into Louisiana uh, there for your Sunday afternoon. And then overnight Sunday into Monday, uh, another complex of storms come knocking. So it's that ring of fire pattern. It's wave after wave after wave of these complexes of storms that we need to watch out for severe weather potential. Now, let's move it up north a little bit, talk about the Mid-Atlantic. Again, could see some strong storms here tomorrow, especially. Let's talk about today, though. We've got some rainy conditions up into Maine, Vermont, New Hampshire, uh, back down into Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and even into Long Island. Severe weather threat relatively low up there today, but gusty winds, maybe some small hail um, and some gustier winds and uh, some pretty heavy downpours with maybe even a little bit of lightning will be what we're watching for up that way today uh, for your Saturday afternoon. That pulls out of here, and uh, then here comes the next big story maker tomorrow. This is tomorrow morning. Again, surface low pressure crossing the Ohio Valley. We're going to get some more spin up this way tomorrow. Again, the closer you are to these low pressure systems, uh, the more spin you're going to have, and if you're in the warm sector, uh, which is going to be right into this region, that's where you've got the spin and the instability. Let's watch that tomorrow for severe weather potential. Virginia, maybe even up into the DMV and the Delmarva, uh, into the northern half of North Carolina. Any of these little storms that start popping tomorrow afternoon, especially closer to the surface low back here, uh, we'll need to be watched for tornadic potential. Might even chase this thing. We'll see uh, how I feel tomorrow about it. But um, again, you can see those showers and storms, gusty winds, small hail, and a couple tornadoes not out of the question there with that setup. That gets us into the evening, and then by the overnight, the severe weather threat dies down, but some scattered showers left over through New England. All right, let's switch on over now and talk about uh, the um, Southern Plains a little bit more in depth, where tomorrow could be a pretty big day of severe weather. All right, here's the Southern Plains. Again, not going to get off uh, here without any problems. Now, today, we're kind of the nicer day of this week, honestly. We've had nonstop storms out here today. Some storms left over, but by this afternoon, again, kind of pulling out of here. Maybe a couple uh, storms try to fire here along a bit of a boundary, it looks like, uh, according to the her here down towards Abilene uh, in that general area. Maybe a couple multi cells with some embedded supercells could develop. A quick spin of tornado, not out of the question, all hazards on the table, but today's kind of the nicer day. Again, you can see some storms there through the Red River Valley as well, but compared to tomorrow, watch what comes knocking on the doorstep. Here's tomorrow afternoon. You're thinking, what are you talking about, Gerald? Where is it? Here it is. A big complex of storms. Again, starting a supercell, so the tornado threat could be quite real here uh, tomorrow afternoon. We've got a lot of spin again, a lot of instability again, all the ingredients you need for supercells. Uh, again, going to be showing up here with that upper level lift uh, going to be in store throughout this region for your Sunday afternoon. You can see supercells developing there. This is around 6 p.m., 5 p.m., 4 p.m., that time frame, local time here uh, into the plains. And eventually during the overnight does congeal into a mesoscale convective complex or a vortex. Either way, that means wind is going to become the big threat with some hail, a lot of lightning overnight here Sunday, crossing through the Red River into the DFW area uh, and a lot of very gusty winds. And then now, by the time we get to Monday, again, that kicks it off east uh, towards the Mississippi River Valley and into the Deep South. Once again, as that ring of fire starts getting pushed south by some upper level energy, also moving south uh, out of Canada. All right. Those are the latest models uh, in the near term. Let's zoom things out again. Talk about the upper level pattern a little bit more. Briefly talk about Monday and the week ahead, and then we'll let you go. 
Well, as I said, that upper level energy going to be suppressing the storm track a little bit here towards the south. Here's Sunday afternoon. Uh, again, this big upper level low to the north. It's moving south, and you can see that highway of storms moving south with it. And guess where the storms are tracking? Right along that line Sunday afternoon, again, starting here and kind of moving along that corridor uh, of upper level flow. It's, uh, you know, it's perfect. I love it whenever things check out here in the upper levels with what we're seeing at the surface. And I could continue. Here we go into Monday afternoon. Again, this is going to suppress the storms up to the north. However, we still got a good amount of instability down south towards the Gulf Coast and with that instability that upper level storm track moving right over it will be something we need to watch and then throughout the week ahead uh, you can kind of see what starts setting up a big old ridge here through much of the country uh, that could uh, quiet things down a little bit and maybe bring the ring of fire uh, back north once more maybe something a little bit more like this so you know that'll be something we watch but as for Monday again could still see severe storms there on Monday you could see the latest outlook from the SPC uh, that slight risk right into the deep south, Nashville, Birmingham, Jackson, Atlanta, even back up towards Columbia could see some strong storms and anyone in the green could even see a severe storm. But I think really the deep south going to have the highest chance of it here. Uh, that's where we will be watching for those stronger storms in that time frame. All right, let's time out the rest of this week a little bit more for you here on the models. And uh, let me back it up because we are way out there in time. Uh, all right, here we go. This is excuse me, Monday afternoon, and you can see what's happening. Again, a big upper level piece of energy. This is why we could see some stronger storms further north. Going to be lacking in stability up there, but we will have wind energy to potentially get some storms going down south, though. Mississippi, uh, Alabama, Tennessee, Louisiana, back into Georgia, South Carolina, heck, even Arkansas, Texas. That's where the storm train starts moving. That's where the instability is. That's where the upper level flow is moving. Uh, all of that upper level energy, and that's where we could have a higher end chance of severe storms. Again, that's for Monday, June 9th. Now, keep it going. Uh, that upper level piece of energy just keeps a swirl and the storm track stays south like a Tuesday. Again, the Gulf Coast could get in on some action here. Same thing for Wednesday here, kind of more of the same. And then by the time we start getting later in this coming week, notice how the storms try to again lift north a little bit. Again, this is getting out there. This is seven or 10 days from now, but the track starts pushing north once more as that big upper level ridge gets into place. And uh, that could bring more people back into the fold of severe weather potential. And we'll definitely watch it for you. Uh, now you can see here on the European ensembles, again, let's time it out for you. Here's that big upper level piece of energy that hangs around really through much of the first half of this work week. Gets kicked out of here by the second half of the work week. And with it, uh, kind of an interesting pattern, big upper level ridge, piece of energy stuck under it. That could still provide storms, We're kind of trapped under this big heat and humidity dome. Uh, and we'll talk about that a little bit more as we get closer into time. But again, the next couple of days is what today's big focus was on. I don't think I'll show you our temperatures forecasted today. Some blue on the map indicating below average temperatures, the red above average. Uh, and as we move this ahead into time, notice we're going to get a good shot of blue the first half of this work week uh, back into the Midwest, into the Ohio Valley, the Great Lakes. Not going to be cold by any means, but uh, you, know, you get 10 to, you know, about 10 or so degrees below average this time of year. Yeah, that can make it uh, at least feel nice outside instead of oppressive. Uh, like uh, you start to get uh, into June here. Uh, now notice though, as we go further ahead into time, you can see that pattern setting up where we've got this big ridge. So we're starting to want to turn warmer, but with uh, areas of upper level energy trapped under it, I could keep someone still average to below average. And that just makes the forecast a little bit more complicated. Again, we'll break it down more in depth as we get closer in time. Alrighty, folks, well, that's all I've got for you on this uh, Saturday. I'll be back tomorrow morning with a video. Might be out storm chase, and if I am, maybe I'll live stream it. Haven't done that in a while, and uh, I'm sure Starlink is sitting over here waiting for me. So we'll uh, look into that as we get closer to tomorrow. All right, y'all stay safe. Have a great day, and I'll see you all tomorrow.